Hi, my name is Melissa Giles, and this is chapter four of Proverbs. Um, I do want to say really, really quickly that if there is a word that I say that you don't understand, that I highly suggest going and looking up in a dictionary. I think that it's really important to know the words for. If you don't know what a word that is saying um, in a proverb, then you may have a different meaning of what it really, really, truly means. And if you really think about it, each word, um, a lot of words will have a different meaning, spelled differently, whatever, like, you know, like them, they, their, um, so um, be sure that if there is something, even when you're reading the Bible, uh, that you're not understanding, it's probably because there's a word that you don't understand um, within the verse, and I suggest going and looking up in the Bible so that you can get the full I'm not in the Bible, excuse me, in the dictionary, so that you can get the full meaning of how it's written in the context that it's written in the Bible, and um, so that you fully understand it. Okay, so I just wanted to say that really quick. Okay, so this is chapter four. Um, Hear, O sons of fathers, instructions, and be attentive that you may gain insight, for I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender the one in the sight of my mother he taught me and said to me let your heart hold fast my words keep my commandment and live get wisdom get insight do not forget and do not turn away from the words of my mouth do not forsake her and she will keep you love her and she will guard you and um, this is wisdom we're talking about right and also for he like god is your father here telling you um, that's obeying. Do not forsake her and she will keep you. Love her and she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom and whatever you get, get insight. It, so I wrote favor in your thinking. Um, favor in your thinking of becoming more spiritual thinking rather than being in worldly thinking. Um, for worldly thinking is not wisdom. Um, but it's favor, <laughs> it's favor in your thinking because God, he protects you um, and your thinking the more wisdom that you get. So the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom and whatever you get, get insight. Um, that's the knowing. Prize her highly and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. Indeed, it's true. She will place on your head a graceful garland. She will bestow on you a beautiful crown. Hear, my son, and accept my words, that the years of your life may be many. And that is a squeezy ass, which I'm thinking that after we do these um, proverb videos that most likely I'll be doing um, videos on squeezy asses because I think a squeezy asses um, is really um, the book to um, better understanding proverbs. Um, and what they really mean and also really um, understanding why the foundation of the earth is faith. Um, why we shouldn't compare ourselves to other people. Um, why, um, how do I say, why everything is just so freaking meaningless, it's ridiculous. Um, and why we should only trust in God for everything that we do and, and how wisdom um, can lead you, guiding you down uh, a path of um, of everything that uh, spiritual, spiritually thinking, uh, spiritual thinking, your purpose, uh, your destiny, your better life, the better you. More importantly than anything, everything else will fall into place um, when the time is right. Um, however. It's you, you know, like everything under the sun. Okay, how do I say this? Every, there's nothing new under the sun but you. And the more wisdom that you gain, then the better you become because you're getting insight of who God is making you to be, which in time and ultimately you want to find that out. You know, you're gaining wisdom through experience. You're gaining uh, wisdom through um uh, you know, just being tired for one, just being sick and tired of being sick and tired. So you want a better way. And I can't really ex express that more. You'll probably hear me say that a lot. And maybe once in each of these videos, um, for the whole book of Proverbs, because it's true, you know, it's just like, you know, it's a better you, you, who are you? Who, who do you really want to become? And when you're tired of being the same way, 
that you have been being, then you want to gain more um, and learn more about yourself. Not only do you want to learn more about yourself, and the only way to learn more about yourself is to gain more wisdom. So, with all of that being said, wisdom. <laughs> all right, I forgot what I, I didn't forget. I went on another tangent that it, um, I went on another tangent anyways. Okay, so let me move forward. I got on the who are you being tangent and it's true. It's just a season, it's a season, thank you, thank you. It's a season of life that, um, you know, we all go through seasons. And again, that's in Ecclesiastes, um, which I really want to teach Ecclesiastes. Um, there's a lot of knowledge in that book. And um, it's, it's, just, it's just a season, you know? It's just like winter, spring, summer, and fall, right? Um, there's the seasons of our life. You know, we are the tree of life. There is a tree of life. There's a tree of knowledge. And then there's a tree of wisdom. And, you know, it, um, it's a season, you know, and unfortunately, in order to get, so how do I say this? In order to have a beautiful summer, you have to go through winter, spring, oh wait, fall. So fall, everything falls off, right? And then you have winter, and then you have spring, and then you have summer, okay? Well, those are like the circumstances in our life, right? And that goes into Ecclesiastes where it talks about the seasons of life or the seasons. And for every season, there is a reason, just like with the four seasons. Yeah, the four seasons. So, um, you know, I'll talk about all of that later. But in these seasons, you get tired of all of these seasons that are going on in your life. And that's when you turn to God. That's when you get wisdom or you're gaining wisdom within those seasons depending on what's going on with you, how you're taking it in, and how you're reacting and who are you choosing to be and who do you want to become. So that was a tangent. That was, that's the, um, what I was trying to say. Okay, so um, moving forward. Uh, let's see here. Um, here my son and accept the words that the years of your life may be many. Um, I have taught you the, I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the path of uprightness. When you walk, your step will not be hampered, and if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not, do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Wisdom is your life, truly. It's the way that you think. Keep hold of instruction. Oh, wait, I just read that. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of the evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on. You know, I'm going through... Um, something right now where I have to, I have to just, I, this proverb, um, rings true to me today even, um, where I don't want to be, I don't want, how do I say it? I'm a very loving, caring, under, understanding person. And it, sometimes it could be a weakness, um, because I don't use the correct discernment or I don't, look at the wisdom part that I've learned in this category because God is love. And so I'm accepting of everybody and can understand everything. However, um, sometimes I could be overly, sometimes I can be overly, um, Uh, overly, I don't want to say overly nice because you can never be overly nice. You can never be overly loving. Um, just, you know, there's discernment that needs to be used when you are corrected in wisdom. And um, there are things that ring true to your day-to-day -day life and who you choose to associate with. And um, um, the discernment part, uh, if you're trying to be more wiser or you've been made to be more wiser within your thinking, um, that most definitely discernment comes in. You have to use discernment. You can not, you don't have to change in who you are being 
Um, however, you have to use discernment in uh, who you choose to hang out with. There, that's 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 what I that's what I was trying to say. Um, is who you choose to to hang out with, and it doesn't mean that you're not loving or not kind um, to other people. It just means that you're being discerned. You're you're having discernment, and you're walking with. You're continuing to walk with with God, and you, ultimately you are. Um, you are guarding your the safety of your thinking um, of being wise of being wise and um, I know that it's really hard sometimes to try to figure out you know who you who you're gonna hang out with or who you have to cut out of your life um, and you don't have to cut anybody out of your life per se um, you just limit that contact um, with a person, um, with that particular person or th those people or what, whatever, whatever it is for you. Um, um, don't think of it as looking at it as being a bad person, but just guarding your thinking and guarding your, your wisdom and ultimately, um, uh, still walking and thinking like God is. So... I don't know if any of that made sense, but I was glad that I was able to talk about it because it helped. <laughs> so, where they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong, they are robbed by sleep unless they have made someone stumble. You know, like drama. You know, it's like you can't go to bed unless you know you had an argument with somebody, or you can't go to bed unless you cause some kind of chaos or some kind of. Um, some kind of something, you know, as somebody said the other day, um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a good day, but I'm gonna go ruin someone else's day. You know, like, what, it, what is that? You know, and there are, unfortunately, are, are people out there that do those types of things, and why, I don't know. Um, pray for them on a day-to-day -day basis, um, that, that they don't do it, that they don't do that, because why go ruin somebody else's day? And um, when you gain, also when you gain wisdom and you think more like God, then nobody can really ruin your day because you're walking in faith and you know that God has them, um, just like He has you. So, um, with that being said, you know, for they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong. They are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble. Um, if you're drama filled and and you just cannot, you know, be happy unless you make somebody else unhappy, then you know, I, I pray for you very hard. Um, um, and I, I hope that uh, if that is you, that, that you can kind of maybe take a step back and say, wait, why? You know, if you're miserable within yourself, well, then maybe that could be a problem. You know, that could be the problem of why you're, you know, like how can you be whole inside if you're out there trying to make somebody else miserable? Well, you're probably not. So with that being said, if you're trying to do something different, maybe that's something that one should take a look at first, um, at how you're treating other people um, or how you're feeling or your intentions of your heart to go and make drama for somebody else um, just because you're having a bad day or whatever, you know, or um, like this particular, like this one person said, you know, um, I'm going to have a good day, um, but I'm going to go and ruin somebody else's day. Well, you know, that's really bad thinking. Okay, so, and I, you can't expect anything good from it. You can't expect to have a good day, and you can't expect to have a good life with that kind of thinking. Um, for they eat the bread of the wickedness, and they drink wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. Yeah, you, get, you become so addicted to drama. You know, it's like a... It's like being addicted to a drug, you know, it's like, it, it, truly, it's like being addicted to a drug, um, that if, if, you know, if there's no drama going on in your life, uh, you're going to go and look for it, just like, just like an alcoholic or an addict would go and find their, their beer or their drugs because they didn't have it that day, you know, um, um, that's how drama filled people are. You know, oh my gosh, if there's really going to be a, a good day without gossiping or drama in my life, that would be a day of hell, as some people might think of it, um, especially if they're addicted to that, 
addicted to that kind of thinking, but that's why we have so many horrible things that are going on in this world. You know, everybody is so addicted to, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people are addicted to, to drama and discontent and hate and um, gossiping is a huge one is, is um, you know, once one person can make their own spirit be uh, damaged, they don't need another person going and damaging their spirit you know, even more. And that's when you go and gossip and you talk about somebody, you're only hurting that person even more than what they're hurting themselves, you know, because you're putting that energy out towards them. And then it just trickles down from person to person, to person, to person. And then ultimately it gets back to the person who's killing them spirits, their spirit anyway on their own, you know? And so, you know, it, that's the damage in gossiping. That's that truly that's the damage in gossiping. Okay, so moving forward um, My son be attentive to my words incline your ear to my sayings Let them not escape from your sight keep them within your heart for they are life to those who find them and healing to all of their flesh That's exactly what I was just talking about healing to all of their flesh. You're not going to go you know, ruin somebody else's day, <clears throat> ruin somebody else's day because you don't want your day to ru be ruined, or you're not gonna go and gossip about somebody else because you wouldn't want to be gossiped about. You know, you're gonna go and lift somebody up instead of talking bad about them, or if you don't like them and don't agree with what they're doing, then we would be going and praying for them um, that they that they get the help or that they see you know, what it is that they're doing wrong or whatever, whatever the case may be. Just like it says here, let them, let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart for they are life to those who find them and healing to all of their flesh. It's healing to your flesh. Keep your heart with all uh, vigilance and from it flow the springs of life. Put away from your crooked speech. That's what we we're just talking about. Gossip, right? Um, put away from your crooked speech and put devious talk away from you far away from you let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you ponder the path of your feet then all your ways will sure, will be sure do not swerve to the right or to the left turn your foot away from evil again faith is the foundation of the earth prayer knowing that God has um, everybody not just you but he has everybody um, rather it's not for you to say whether it's wrong or if, if it's right. It's your duty to pray for them and help them to, how do I say, not help them, well, help them to see if you're one of those types of people that will go and try to talk or help somebody who is in need of being helped, then that's great. But if you're in the middle of drama and you can put a stop to any kind of devious talk or anything like that, um, the gossiping, then um, I really highly encourage to put more energy out there like that instead of um, flowing with the energy of evil. So with that being said, um, prayers for, for those, again, would be, you know, Father, please forgive them for they do not know what they do. Prayers to help them see, um, you know, for yourself, please God, direct my thoughts into not gossiping that whatever your plan is for them is not their, it's not the plan for me. I want to have your thinking and not worldly thinking. And please take away this talk, this perverted speech out of my mouth where I don't want to gossip anymore. I want to be like you. Um, yeah. So, um, gossiping can kill a person, you know, don't go kill a spirit that's already been killed. You know, don't go, I did I say that from my heart guys because it's it's bad you know I mean gossiping is bad you know the person's already having a hard time and I just feel like if, if there was more people out there putting energy into you know praying for them or even going and talking to them about whatever it is that's going on and granted you can't do that with everybody and I understand that However, you can pray about everyone and prayer is very, very powerful and putting that energy of love out there instead of that energy of gossip or not agreeing with somebody or whatever um, they're doing, you know, first ask yourself is, if, if it's, is it something that you've done before or in a position or have you ever been in a position of that before or whatever, like you have to always put yourself in their shoes before you can ever say anything about anybody 
about anything that anybody is doing because if you've done it to you then you have no room to gossip about anything you know other than you can go and say to that person you know how may I help you you know that, that that's 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 truth right there so anyways um, that's chapter 4 Proverbs and um, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom and whatever you get, get insight. Thank you. My name is Melissa Giles.